Hey guys, Heather Antos here, senior editor at Valiant, here to talk to you about this week's Hero of the Week. Nerdorotic.com. I don't have a problem with Heather Antos personally. I don't care if she's an anti-capitalist editor at Valiant Comics. I don't care that she used to work at Marvel and used to edit Star Wars books. I care about her attitudes consequences in this industry, and it's not just her. This video is not about her tweets, although we will cover some of them a little later on. It's more about the repercussions of the general attitude in the industry, the attitude of ingratitude. Speaking of gratitude, I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel and liked and shared the videos. It really has helped, and I thank you for your continued support. This brings us to the New York Times, which is taking a break from misleading the public to talk about some actual real news. Can comic books survive the thing that shall not be named era? A key distributor has halted deliveries and shops are shuttered, putting the entire industry in jeopardy. A lot of people are going to lose their livelihoods. Now, I've already gone over a lot of what this article covers, but we're going to hear from some of the comic shop retailers and some of the comic shop creatives who remain in denial. Comic book superheroes are used to finding themselves in life or death situations and fighting back against seemingly impossible odds. But who can they turn to when comic books themselves are imperiled? Like every other business that has been upended by the thing that shall not be named, comic book publishing, a wellspring of material for countless hit films and TV shows, is in considerable jeopardy. Comic books stopped being a wellspring of ideas for itself, and it became an IP farm for Hollywood, leading to less oversight and having the inmates running the asylum and poisoning the well of source material. More on that later. In recent weeks, the industry has been throttled at every juncture. Comic store owners have shuttered their shops and the distribution of new titles has been frozen. Writers and artists continue to produce work not knowing how or when readers will be able to see it and, more importantly, whether they will be interested in seeing it or buying it. The dollars at stake are substantial. In recent years, sales of comics and graphic novels in the United States and Canada have topped $1 billion annually now. What isn't mentioned is all the padding of numbers. One billion annually sounds great until you hear this. With printed comic books accounting for more than a third of that figure, or just over a third of that figure, or $400 million to be nice. According to an analysis by Comicron and ICV2, sites that track the comic book business, sites that tend to help with that denial by painting the rosiest of pictures. Here is an example of that denial from the latest Comic-Con blog written by John Jackson Miller, and it's in two sentences. But there's no need to reinvent something that wasn't broken. You gotta be fucking kidding. The market was healthy before this. <laughs> this doesn't help because there has never been a situation like this before. And when we hear something like this from John Jackson Miller, which is echoed by Brian Michael Bendis later on in this article that the comic book industry has survived calamities before the Comics Code Authority, wars, recessions, that famous date in September, they hope things will turn out the same, that they will bounce back. Well, you can say it along with me, hope is not a strategy. But now, neither the people who make comic books nor the veteran observers of the industry see a quick solution. They cannot predict whether the current calamity will eradicate only some stores and publishers or an entire decades-old model of doing business. While I am grateful that the New York Behind the Times has decided to report on some real news and shed some light on the situation, this is stuff you've already heard on YouTube for the last three weeks. Yes, we know this is an extinction-level event. That comes from Heidi McDonald at The Beat, who was echoing what Brian Hibbs said. She adds, It's life-changing for everyone. Yeah, no shit. This is a whole industry that lived on very thin margins. There's no port in this storm. Yet, The Beat 
was one of those access media sites that contributed to the problem, not facing reality, shilling. These are consequences for all of this. Publishers of every size recognize that there are risks. And of course, they talk to Marvel president Dan Buckley, who has this to add. This crisis is having an unprecedented impact on every aspect of our lives and requires patience and perseverance. Endeavor to persevere. Adding that he remained optimistic that comics are here to stay. We don't need patience and perseverance at this point. We need a plan. All Marvel has offered is discounts on books that comic shops can't sell to customers. The proprietors of comic shops across the country say that what once looked like a promising year of business has evaporated amid state-by-state -state policies that have required the closure of their stores. Hard stop there. It was evaporating prior to people having to close their stores. This was going to happen anyway, and the thing that shall not be named just pushed it over the cliff. Now, I'm not going to go over this entire article. It's a bit of a tome, and it's a lot of repeated information, but we do, again, need to hear from the retailers. And speaking of those retailers, some unsolicited advice from one former retailer. Now, I know you guys and gals are some of the most dialed-in people out there when it comes to fandom, but comic books are a bit of a bubble. And if you only listen to the access media websites when it comes to reviews or their views on fans, you're not getting the whole story. So maybe you should try to look at YouTube. That's what I did. I stepped out of the industry and I saw it with a fresh pair of eyes and I was shocked what I saw. That access media sites are calling your paying customers, ists, phobes and those bad guys from Germany. And they tend to remember things like that. They tend to hold a grudge. They tend to remember the Heather Antoses of the world calling Americans the worst fans. They tend to remember the Gail Simones of the world tweeting the temples that hold up the industry are white, cis, straight, able-bodied, and male. It's okay to chip away at that. And that's what leads to this. I went from thinking about giving myself a bonus to not paying myself, says Ron Lamberty, who runs Rodman Comics in Ankeny, Iowa. Now the worst case scenario has happened. Why are we at that worst case scenario? Why are we at paper thin margins when the industry was booming and everything's fine? But these stores were dealt a further blow when Diamond Comics Distributor, the company that supplies them with the comic books and graphic novels of most major publishers, announced that it would stop shipping new comics to stores beginning April 1st. And that wasn't an April Fool's joke. And of course, calls to Diamond's offices in Maryland were not returned to the New York Times. And then we hear from actual creatives in this industry, some of whom have contributed to this problem. And now they're seeing the reality of the situation like G. Willow Wilson, who recently had to put pencils down. Comics still rely on actual stores and the communities they provide. We are now deprived of those gathering places, she said. The loss of that community has really been disruptive to people. Yes, you know what else has been disruptive? Attacking the paying customers. For me, little has changed, said Greg Capullo, a veteran comics artist who is drawing the coming DC series, Dark Knight's Death Metal. <laughs> And then we hear from Chris Eliopoulos. Editors and freelancers are doing their jobs and we've been getting pages in, Eliopoulos said. I've been one of the lucky ones and I haven't felt any major repercussions at this time. Wow, what a news flash. Now, the last two gentlemen you just heard from do not contribute to the problem. They do not attack fans, but you got to think about their statements and how comic shops perceive that. They are still working full steam ahead, yet comic shops can't sell books. Put two and two together, and it looks like they're being abandoned. And if you want proof of that belief, we're going to jump over real quick to Brian Hibbs tilting at Windmill's blog that came out a couple of days ago. Brian Hibbs is the owner of Comics Experience. He's a prominent voice in comic book retailing and the guy who bought my shop. Now, we're just going to go over some highlights. I highly recommend you read the whole article, and this should illustrate 
why the comic shop owners don't really feel like they are on solid ground with the publishers and Diamond. We'll start with DC. Obviously, it's been an open secret for a long time now that there are factions at DC that pine to get rid of physical print periodicals. In fact, I was told that one of the very first questions that was asked by AT&T when they had their first post-takeover meeting at DC, which was pre thing that shall not be named was why are we still printing these when it comes to dan buckley's marvel as i write this we just passed the second wednesday where it wasn't actually clear what marvel was doing i lost sleep in the good days when my livelihood was dependent on decisions made by joe casada i can't imagine what it's like right now. Brian says a couple of very interesting things here. We've already had a number of years for a declining market for superhero comic periodicals. Why would we jump both feet in back into that without real leadership and communication? Marvel and DC have already lost my faith. The former from not telling us anything directly and plainly, the latter for being weasels in how they informed us about their digital plans first. What kind of partners are those? the kind of partners you've always had. It's very disappointing out of DC, but that's the way it's kind of always been with Marvel. Let me be clear. I'm not that worried about the medium of comics. Not that worried. Things were booming before the thing that shall not be named for not superhero material. Remember that. But for Marvel and DC to rebuild my trust in their publishing plans in the raw viability of superhero periodicals in the post thing that shall not be named era, well, they need to work for those sales starting immediately. Things can't go back to the way they were before, even if we wanted them to. Things are booming for Scholastic and manga, and that makes this all the more tragic. Unfortunately, your average comic book shop relies on that declining superhero periodical. In other words, the comic book. And Brian says it right here. The vast majority of comic book stores is completely dependent on Marvel to pay their bills. So as you hear the head honchos at Marvel say, comics are here to stay, you might understand why comic shops are feeling a little insecure at this time, not feeling part of their plans because they haven't heard any. How many people are going to continue with the habit of comics if it gets interrupted for any real period of time? Long term, what if the market loses even 5% of its readers? That will be a significant body blow to many stores. I think that has already happened, Brian. We already know of at least one store that isn't planning on reopening on the other side of the crisis. Lee's Comics in Mountain View. Now that number is up to four, by the way, and my latest video talked about it. You can find it right here. And I don't see how publishers considering digital first wouldn't increase the number of stores thinking the same. Lord, it's making me think that maybe reopening won't be viable, and I'm one of the rah rahest cheerleaders for comics you could possibly find, and I can attest to that. Now we're going to jump back to the New York Times and talk about Hollywood once again, because that has been the biggest problem. A lot of these creatives who work in the comic book industry want to work there, and they think Hollywood will save them because they have been a giant IP farm for Disney but maybe not much longer. Whatever the outcome of this upheaval, no one expects Marvel and rival DC, which publishes the adventures of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman to fall by the wayside. Though their parent companies, Disney, which owns Marvel, and AT&T, which owns DC, have sustained steep financial losses during this thing that shall not be named. These imprints are viewed as crucial pipelines of superhero characters and storylines that can be adapted into television shows and blockbuster films. Once again, this problem rears its ugly head that the comic book industry solely exists for Hollywood as a farm system for the studios. And that farm system has been protected by Hollywood, the MCU in particular, allowing comic book creatives to attack the paying customer without consequence and that party may be over i don't think brian michael bendis has received the memo yet recalling the period after that famous date in september when he wrote for marvel bendis said i very specifically remember feeling and being told that we might be done totally and that three weeks later it all bounced back i think something similar will happen here we're going to figure out how to fix this and get back to work hope is not a strategy and i give you ryan Leibowitz with reality. Maybe at some point I can open my doors again, said Ryan Leibowitz, who runs Golden Apple Comics in Los Angeles. 
but if they've been sitting at home without buying new comic books for two, three months, they might go, eh, it was fun for a while, but I don't really need them anymore. Maybe they've reevaluated what's important to them. But it's not the customer who needs to do reevaluating. It is some of the comic shop retailers and in turn the publishers and their employees. With attitudes like this, it's hard to see that they will ever change. Hey guys, Heather Antos here, senior editor at Valiant, here to talk to you about this week's Hero of the Week, Exo Man of War. Now, I tried to come up with an Exo Man of War costume. The closest I had was this unicorn onesie. But if you think about it, Eric of Dacia is sort of like a unicorn in the Valiant superhero universe. He's a fifth century Visigoth warrior who was chosen by a sentient alien armor, Shinhara, to become Exo Man of War, Valiant's most powerful superhero. And just in luck, perfect in time is a brand new launch of Exo Man of War number one, which you can check out now on Comixology or any digital platform. Comic shops may still have it in stock, so you can get that delivered or curbside pickup. Or you can also check out some of our previous series, uh, the Exo Man of War run by Robert Venditti, or this lovely Exo Man of War run by Matt Kent. I hope you check it out, and as always, stay valiant. With salespeople like that, it is hard to imagine why the comic book industry is falling apart right now. But in all seriousness, I have talked a lot about consequences other people have to pay for the comic book professionals' actions. Now, they have every right to their free speech and free expression, but they do need to think about, as individuals, as adults, how this affects others. And now those consequences are here. So maybe Heather's comrades in the comic book club will start to think about them because the New York Times is writing articles about the death of the comic book industry. And as we close things out, I give you Brian Hibbs one last time. Sadly, so much of the direct market, the comic book retailing industry, is something like a battered spouse. We insist they'll change and we take our hits again and again, and then eventually one day you get beaten to death. That day came really, really close last week. A knife in the back is one thing, a knife in the face is so much worse. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please support your local comic book shop if you can. Please be safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Nerdorotic.com, please subscribe. We thought about it for a long time endeavor to persevere and when we had thought about it long enough we declared war on the union